Or maybe, maybe we're shipping a framework and we need some public symbols or even an application that has a plugin API, but we don't want all our symbols public. Well, then we can choose non-global symbols from the strip style, and that'll strip out anything that's not global. How do we control that? Well, there are a couple different ways. First of all, there's an inline compiler directive you can use when writing your code. Second, there's a, a set of, or two settings, ex an exports file setting, which we can see if we type export into the filter box, and an unexported un symbols file setting. We can set these build settings to an exported symbols file or an unexported symbols file that respectively specify the symbols we wish to export and or the symbols we don't want to export. Finally, if we type in private into that filter box, there's a setting, uh, use private extern by default, or symbols hidden by default is the, is the actual name. If we turn that on, it'll make everything non-global by default. So that's, that's a whole bunch of build settings I've just thrown at you. Don't expect you to remember that. What you really need to take away is three types of stripping, dead code stripping, stripping debug symbols, stripping privacy strip symbols, uh, privacy stripping, and how to find those settings. You can type in strip into the filter box, make sure stripping is on, deployment post-processing, type in debug, make sure your debug symbols are being generated properly, export to set your exports file, and private if you want to turn on private extern by default. Let's go back to our slides. And Chris Espinoza is now going to take you out with some tips on better Xcode usage. Thanks, Rick. Thanks, Chris. Um, that was a quick trip through the basics of Xcode. Uh, there will be other sessions today and through the week that will take you into more detailed parts of Xcode. Do read the Xcode documentation. It's right there under the help menu in Xcode. Um, and do avail yourselves of the resources that, that we have, uh, such as the Xcode users mailing list, um, to get your questions answered to learn more about the product. In fielding questions on the Xcode users mailing list, especially people who are new to the tool, there are five or six things that come up over and over again that if somebody just explains them to you first, it'll save you a lot of time and anguish in learning about how the tool works and how to use it. So I'm here to do that now. So here are five quick tips that will save you a lot of time in approaching Xcode. First thing is we have something called SDK-based development. When you build your product, you build it against a set of files and link libraries in the SDK rather than against the root of your system. But for historical reasons, when you want to add a framework to link against it, you actually don't add it from the SDK, you add it from the root. So rule number one is even though your project is set up to use the SDK that determines which system that you want to um, deliver for, when you add a framework or a link library, you actually go to slash uh, system slash library slash frameworks in order to find the framework to add. It confuses a lot of people, but um, we will do the translation automatically from what framework you mean to the framework that you actually get at link time. Second thing is that a lot of the Unix files are hidden from end users. Well, how do you get to them if you want to add a header file or a library from slash user slash lib? Well, you just uh, do the open window and then you either type command shift G or just the slash key and the standard navigation panel will let you get directly to that folder by path name. It's a universal way to get to hidden folders that we want to hide the Unix things from the Mac OS X users but make them available to the developer. So that's a very very common trick to use is just open, type slash or command shift G, type in the path and you can get directly to that header file or that library to include. Uh, this one comes up about every month on the Xcode users list. When you create a new file using the new file template, it comes up with a, temp with a uh, placeholder for your organization name. You set that placeholder with a uh, hidden preference. You set it from the terminal with defaults right. 
This is one of the more poorly documented parts of Xcode. There's one simple line you cut and paste into your terminal. You do it once and it works forever. Uh, but this is something you need to go to Google or go to the um, expert preferences document to put in. You do this once and every new file you create will have your organization name in it instead of uh, my company name with double underscores around it. This is one that people keep asking us, why don't you put this in Xcode? And we say, well, it's here in Xcode. It's called uh, Find Sets. You go to the Project Find, you click the Options button. There's a checkbox for Search in Files and Folders, and you can add any folder, add any path to that, and then you can either make the default make a default find set or a custom find set, search in arbitrary files and folders on your disk. So if you want to search user include, if you want to search the boost sources, if you want to search your own set of sources, you can just add them to this list and they'll be searched. Similarly, in Xcode preferences, there's something to add your own list of source files for the uh, open quickly mechanism if you want open quickly to navigate to things in your sources in other places. Finally, there is a favorites bar in Xcode. You, we don't have tabbed editing or tabbed navigation, but we do have a favorites bar you can add, and you can put selected um, source files, header files, documentation, even files from outside the project, like your to-do list of things you want to do frequently, and you can just drag and drop them into that favorites bar and then navigate to them quickly. It's a very easy way to jump around to places that you have to go to constantly without having to just have a finder window open on your desktop. So I want to give you a summary of what we've talked about today. We've talked about what an IDE does and why integration is good in your development environment. We've talked a little bit about some differences between the Xcode IDE and the IDEs you may be coming from or familiar with. We've taken you on a quick tour through creating projects, editing, and building. We didn't touch debugging, but there are a couple of debugging sessions later on in the week that I highly recommend you go to. Uh, we've given you some quick tips and tricks for working in Xcode.